It's one of the most distinctive features of one of the world's great mountains, the snow cap atop Africa's Mount Kilimanjaro. But the snows are gradually disappearing, and experts say they may be totally gone by the end of this century. Scientists are divided on why this is happening. The debate could affect our understanding of climate change. This is a temperature logger that uh, place on the southwest of the mountain and uh, logging humidity and temperature. They are basically on the floor for two years before we download them. Simon Matui and his father used to farm their land using traditional methods, but changing weather patterns have affected their crops. So he decided to study the ecosystem in the Kilimanjaro area. These weather um, stations has been starting working on the mountain since 2000. It provided data that showing what is happening on the top of the, of the mountain where the glaciers are. So what is the weather behaving down below here? It's very much indeed affecting the, the glaciers size on the top. Most people think that the glaciers on Kilimanjaro are melting. In other words, if they were melting, then we will see the river full of water. No, that's not what is happening. What is happening on Kilimanjaro, on these global weather parameters, we are having more temperature rise on the atmosphere. The air is getting thicker and hotter, and then actually the glaciers evaporating. In Tanzania, up to 400,000 hectares of forests disappear each year to deforestation. The impact reverberates all the way to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. We really have done an analysis of what the river reserves need. How can we mimic that at a larger scale once these have been deforested? Sarah Scott founded a community-based initiative called the Kilimanjaro Project. We do it in two ways. One, we assess what is needed, what are the indigenous trees that have grown here before, and we plant those trees in our nurseries and we'll do reforestation work. But you can find um, trees that have been cut down and their stumps are there and their stumps are sprouting. And so through a process called FMNR, we prune those trees and allow those old trees to regrow. So there's a combination of restoration and FMNR uh, to restore these riparian zones. The Kilimanjaro project has been able to plant trees by the thousands, but their goal is to reach one million annually. What we are doing here is uh, FMNR, which is the short form for Farmers Management Natural Regenerative. In 2018, Samuel Andrew joined the Kilimanjaro Project. His passion for preservation stems from his youth. His hometown was devastated by overgrazing of cattle, so Samuel started planting trees in the area. We are training this kind of uh, species to become big trees. When you prune uh, the other uh, growing from side by side, you let only the or only one standing as, uh, and that will absorb all the nutrients and that will push it to become a big tree. So the importance of trees along these riparian zones is that their root systems go way into the ground and they hold the soil. Um, and by holding the soil, they stop topsoil erosion when it rains. It also helps increase uh, the water table because when it does rain, they pull water from the atmosphere and hold it down in their roots. And so this is why it's important to do this restoration work. But it is harder and harder to protect these ecosystems. <laughs> 